Our next guest says that the global recovery is continuing, but there are serious risks. I'm joined now by the IMF's chief economist, Olivier Blanchard. Thank you so much for it's joining us. Uh, today, there seems to be worry in the marketplace uh, about the stability of the recovery. How do you characterize where we are? Yeah, I don't think there is much risk at the global level uh, about the, the strength of the recovery. It's there. there are places in the world where one has to worry. Uh, Perifere Europe is one. I think that's what's affecting the markets today. I haven't looked at the numbers today, yes, but no, I suspect that's, that's a place where people have questions. So, uh, you know, how Perifere Europe is going to get out of the hole is clearly a very big issue for Perifere Europe for core Europe indirectly uh, and for the world to some extent. But the recovery is, is, is fairly strong. I mean, in, in emerging market countries, you know, what we're seeing is overheating to, uh, mm -hmm. to a large extent. Uh, um, what has been the most disruptive event to the global economy? In the last... Uh, it has been such a busy news cycle. It certainly okay. kept me busy. It must have say been keeping the, you busy. You've got last... Japan. You've got the uprisings in the Middle East. Uh, you've got worries about job creation in the United States. Yeah, I think States. If, if I go back to the previous meetings of the IMF, so six months, so what we've had is Japan. Now, what's striking about Japan is that the size of a human tragedy is, is enormous. But Japan is such an enormous economy that in macroeconomic terms, it's, it's a serious issue for them. Um, private demand is probably going to be substantially lower as a result. Fiscal impulse is going to be stronger. The effects on Japan are not going to be enormous at the macro level. And as a result on the world, it's not going to be enormous. In the Middle East, we don't know how things will turn out. Mm -hmm. So long as the major oil exporters are not directly affected, there's enough capacity uh, in OPEC and various other places that the price of oil is not going to jump to incredible levels. So we worry a bit, but not very much. Uh, with oil, where you just yes. left us there, um, where do you start to get worried? Because certainly in Europe, it's been over $100 a barrel. Yeah. Here in the United States, we're fluctuating, but we're staying above $100 a barrel. Is that truly not? Uh, no, we don't think. We think that as long as it stays, say, under 120, that's going to be a bit of a break on the world recovery, but we're talking about fractions of a percent, not, not very big numbers. What happened in the 70s was very different. I mean, you basically had wage indexation, oil was big, right. central banks didn't quite know what to do, so you got this very big stagflation. It's a different world. So it's going to have some effect, uh, but again, at the world level, as long as we stay at 120, say, which is what you know, roughly what the markets think, we'll be fine. If it gets to 150 to 200, then you, you start getting all kinds of effects, right? Uh, have you models for that? I mean, what, what would get us to those levels? Well, what, we, what would get us to those levels is a major supply disruption, right? So if one of the major oil exporters had to cut production, then it's very easy. The demand for oil is very inelastic. So and, and you're not forecasting price. that from Saudi Arabia? There's concerns about uh, the diplomatic no, we, relationship we, perhaps think, being uh, impacted. Our baseline surely doesn't have that. And I think it's very much of a tail risk. Mm -hmm. uh, we've looked at what could happen in that case. In this case, clearly, this would be a big issue, but it's a very low probability, we think. Uh, let's talk about what's happening here in Washington right. and what has been happening in the past few days. Uh, the debts in this country are very much in focus. Uh, right. The president outlined roughly his plan uh, for how to reduce this deficit. What's your impression of that? Well, it's progress. Uh, it's just uh, that uh, it's being discussed. You uh, mean. The fact that it's being discussed, that the president is actually kind of putting something on the table. Uh, the problem in the U.S. is not what the deficit is this year or next year. It's important, but it's what's going to be in five years, ten years. Right? So we really have to have this discussion about the medium term, about the next 20 years. To the extent that the president presented something which had, you know, a long view, uh, that's what has to be discussed. Uh, there is not going to be fiscal sustainability in the U.S. without discussing entitlements, social security, healthcare. We all know this. I think hopefully this is the start of a very good and useful debate. So it's, it's a good thing, no question. That those things are going to be discussed, but from your perspective, it couldn't be successful in terms of a, a restructuring plan, a reduction of, of, of debt, unless social security, unless Medicare, unless Medicaid are restructured. Oh, I think there's no question. I mean, mm -hmm. basic arithmetic shows you. But, that because that's the president the case. has said he doesn't think that social security necessarily. Well, social security is a, is a, is a bit less rate. important than healthcare. Healthcare is clearly where you know the expenditures are increasing over mm -hmm. time. So that's where something has to be done. Uh, I suspect social security has to be 
modified at some margin. It's less important, but everything has to be on the table. So the last discussion about the 60 billion, you know, 39 in the end, this was about the stuff which is so small that it can't make a difference in the long run. We really have to look at the rest, right? A very quick question for you on uh, the question of the debt ceiling. Um, right. Washington, Wall Street, geographically close, but worldview quite different. We're very worried about uh, the credibility uh, of the United States uh, on that front. Right. Do you think that the debt ceiling will in fact be raised and, and that the immediacy of that uh, is understood? Obviously it will be raised. The question is after how much bargaining and, and what will come out. And how out. close to that May deadline. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, but there's no question. Uh, we, we cannot stay under this uh, debt ceiling. The closer forever. we get to that, though, how right. much more of a concern does it become for you? Well, I think markets are going to worry a bit. And then again, I mean, the uncertainty is not about whether it will be lifted. It will, it will be increased. But what will come with it? Will it be a coherent plan or will it be a mismatch uh, of various measures which don't go anywhere? This we'll see. I think the markets are going to worry about it. We're all going to watch very carefully. You're expecting that. All right. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time and thanks for having us here.